come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I will be taking a first look and paging through The Adventurer's Guide to Theria, Volume 1, Ilara, which is from Dungeons and Randomness. This is a 5e setting book, which is set in the world of the popular Dungeons and Randomness podcast. And we will be diving into this fairly thick tome right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be paging through, taking a first look at the Adventurer's Guide to Theria in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, be sure to ring that little notification because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com. We are celebrating 10 years of the Gaming Gang right now. You will find loads of tabletop gaming news, reviews, Comics, movies, TV, you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Without further ado, I am taking a deep dive into The Adventurer's Guide to Theria, Volume 1, Ilara, which is from Dungeons and Randomness. It's written by Jason Massey and Brianna Marie. This 392-page hardcover is available from Dungeons and Randomness for... $59.99. You can also score the PDF over at DriveThruRPG for $29.99 right now. And of course, whenever I mention DriveThruRPG, keep in mind, the Gaming Gang is an affiliate of the One Bookshelf sites. So if you are going to swing over to DriveThru, please pop over to thegaminggang.com first, click on one of our banner ads, and that way, if you happen to make a purchase, you get a little portion of that sale. And all those little portions really do add up and help keep the gaming gang around. So let's swing on over to the other camera. Here we have The Adventurer's Guide to Theria, Volume 1. And this is based on a very popular podcast series. And I think one of the big selling points of the podcast series is that there are different adventures going on with different groups and they all share the same world of Theria. I'll be honest, I have not listened to the podcast, which might actually be kind of a cool thing because when I do my review, I'll be able to look at this book as a setting book without really having any background information to start off with. So that should be pretty cool. Although I must admit, the podcast does sound pretty cool, too, so I'll probably end up listening to it. Also, the fine folks over at Dungeons & Randomness were kind enough to send over this review copy as well. So I'm going to read a little bit off the back. I'm not going to read all the text off the back here, but uh, from the murky and ominous Yemgar Swamp to the bustling and treacherous streets of Brightport, the continent of Alara provides endless opportunities and challenging pursuits for brave adventurers. Explore the thrilling, unpredictable world of Theria with the Adventurer's Guide to Theria, Volume 1, Ilara, following in the footsteps of legendary characters from the Dungeons and Randomness podcast. Famous and infamous, triumphant and tragic. With this handbook as your guide, you'll find everything you need to recreate classic sagas from the show or to devise your own epic tales within the world of Theria. Characters, maps, Weapons, magic items, monsters, dungeons, and even the cast of the show are at your disposal. All right, let's hop on in. As I mentioned, this is, uh, this is a pretty hefty book here. 392 pages, so let's jump on in. I am going to page through this at a relatively quick pace, simply because we want to take a peek at what we've got inside. I will mention 
that there is also a map of Theria that came with this book. We'll take a peek at it right at the end. It's a fold-out uh, kind of poster size. So let's just jump on in. So talking about the continent. Welcome to Alara. And I will apologize right up front if I'm mispronouncing anything that I mention here. As I said before, I have not watched, I shouldn't say watched, I have not listened to this podcast. So all of this is brand new to me. In fact, this just arrived in the mail. I opened up the box, took it out, did some quick graphics for the show, and off we go with the video. So kind of just paging on through here. So we're getting some information about different factions and groups, governments, talking about the Yemgar Swamp, the White Raven's Cave. So we've got some notable places. Oh, cool. So we've got some encounter tables for the Evergreen, the Swamp. We've got a travel diet table. So it looks like we're going to get a gazetteer breaking down a lot of the areas of the continent. So we are taking a look at 10,000 horns. So it looks like we are going to also get encounter tables for each of these areas as well. I had to say this is pretty impressive. This is pretty impressive. The, uh, the artwork looks pretty nice. That's pretty cool cartography with this city, the city of Overdale. It does look like the art kind of has a little bit of an, a little cartoon or anime influence to it. It's not overly cartoony, I guess is a word that I tend to use. But it is not, uh, it's not supposed to be photorealistic, obviously enough. This looks pretty neat. So here we have Winter Haven. Looks like that's another city. So talking about different factions and groups there. More travel tables. Oh, okay, so what do we have here? We've got a little bit of... Uh, we got, it looks like we got some fiction. The Siege of Winterhaven. So that continues for a few pages. Now we've got the Divide. Really nice maps. That is, that is really well done. And it appears that each of these areas, we get a, bit of, a little bit of a map. We also get a, kind of a, a full spread of artwork as well to kind of give us a feel for that area, the Deadwood. As far as I know, the Deadwood is all ambush city. There's not a lot of safe spots, if any. Huh, and then we see someone's hung up. Somebody's been strung up on a tree there. Moving right along through here. Another reason why I paid through relatively quickly is because there are some viewers out there who think if I stop and pause on a page that pirates out there are able to pirate the book because of that. That is certainly not how role-playing game piracy works by any stretch of the imagination. But still, I don't want people to sit there just, you know, talking about it. Because I have run across that before. Uh, with some of my role-playing game page throughs. So looks like we're getting into quite a bit of just little uh, bits of fiction. So we have the Heroes March, the Blistering Peaks. Esther Holt. Looks like we got another city there. Wow, this, the, the Gazetteer is pretty long here. Got quite a bit in here. Dragon's Reach. The Hunter's Bounty. Fairbay is that a, <clears throat> excuse me, must be a city or a port. Lock Fort. The Silver Glade. So we get some notable places, some notable PCs. Here we have a, a bit of a small dungeon. Titan Shard Bunker. Oh, wow. So here, all of a sudden, we just... In the middle of this, we kind of get uh, a bit of an adventure. Or at least an adventure location. We've got some stat blocks as well. So we've got the 
the keys to the map, what's where. Wow, there's just a lot of different areas. Nice. So far, I'm impressed. I am very impressed with what I'm seeing so far, especially since this is not coming from a Wizards of the Coast or a Paizo or a Cubicle 7 or Free League Publishing. I mean, this, this is top-notch presentation, at least. Now, as far as the information and the gameable material within, I don't know. As I mentioned, this just arrived in the mail, and we are taking a first look. But, I mean, the, the maps, the cartography, everything is very, very nicely done. And, wow, we're at 147 pages, and we are still in the Gazetteer. Nice. And we had a good good chunk of info uh, to at least kind of give you a feel for the area. So we kind of get a bit about the area. Then it looks like we get, uh, depending on certain cities, we get a little bit of history. We get some notable people, notable places, notable NPCs, which I'm going to take a stab in the dark. We're going to see those NPCs towards the back of the book. And then some of these areas also have a bit of fiction devoted to it as well. The islands, Drake Island, the Fire Isles. Aren't those off the coast of New York? <laughs> uh, Serpent Island. So I, okay, so now we're going to get into, it looks like, yeah, now we're going to get into more setting info. Uh, we've got the calendar, which is right here. So we're talking about the calendar and even holidays, the currency, diseases, flop sweats, <laughs> the Snickers. I guess that's uh, for when you're hungry. I need in a sticker, you know, so you get a case of the Snickers. Mind erosion. I guess there's plenty of folks out there who think that I'm undergoing that right now. Brain worms. Well, wow, this is kind of cool. Now we get into drugs. So it uh, looks like uh, these are actually narcotics for the most part there. That's what they're discussing there. And then looks like we've got a variety of different drugs. Intoxication. <laughs> Blackout. So those are some different beverages there. Oh, look at this. Now we get into some, some recipes. That's pretty wild. And I bet you these are real recipes that you could enjoy. Medicine, trade, weather, and nature. Very cool. All right. Character creation. How to create theory and characters. So we've got race, upbringing, class, age, faith, uh, motivation, so try to use English here, Jeff. Personality. So we've got some creation tables for those who like randomness. Wow, you could even randomly determine what class you're going to play. Let me get some backgrounds. So we had culinary arts <laughs> and monster hunters. A life of deception. I'd say that's kind of a wide range there, right? You can accept this. All right, so then we get into the races. So we've got dark elves. I wonder if these races are on top of traditional 5E cultures, races and cultures. Well, we've got dwarves, elves, gnomes, Isai. Half elves, halflings, high elves, humans, lizard folk, minotaurs, orcs. Oh, there's quite a few different cultures you can come from. Uh, dragonborn, tieflings, Venali. Then we get the player classes. So barbarians and bards, clerics, druids, endurance, fighters, paladins. Rangers, rogues, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. 
And we get some class features. Oh, that's cool. And it looks like they're packing a lot of information here on these pages for the different classes as well. That's pretty cool. So we have different founts. So we had Fount of Love. So these are for the endurance, the Fount of Calm, Fount of Fear, Fount of Joy, Fount of Anger and Hate. So now we have Class Augments. So we've got Revenants, Lycanthropy. Oh, we got some stat blocks for different werewolves. Vampirism. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool artwork right there. Aha! Now we get into the bestiary. Let's take a look through here. This looks like we've got a couple of different kinds of dragons. Looks like we've got... Uh, it doesn't look like every single one of these is uh, receiving an image, but... At least we're getting some artwork for these, which I appreciate. Oh, it is possible that, like, for an example, Dire Cobalt. I'm going to take a guess that it's kind of like a usual Cobalt. It might look about the same. There we go. Cool. It's the Omlu. Razor flies. Okay, that's uh, not pleasant. Says, though small and seemingly harmless at first, a swarm of razor flies attack in large enough numbers that make them difficult to defend against. <laughs> Additionally, their name is not given for poetic license. <laughs> the razor flies' wings are as sharp as blades and able to slice through flesh with ease simply by flying near enough to its target. Wow, that's cool. I like that. Gotta say, like, this is not a review. <laughs> Some people are like, you know, I'll do a, a, a un, you know, like an unboxing or a first look, you know, page through. And people are like, hey, thanks for the review. Well, this is certainly not a review, but just looking through this, I am very impressed. This is a very nice job. Mechanics and miscellany. So we got magic, pantheon of gods. Pantheon of Demon Lords. Bringing back the dead. Bring back the dead! I'm not quite dead yet! So it looks like we've got some... Are these magic items? Oh, treasures. Yep, yeah. okay. There we go. Cool. We'll get some images of these as well. Some objects and artifacts. Rod of Wonder Effects Table. Campaign starters <laughs> dead and loving it. And loving it! Yes, I know that's a Get Smart reference that I know a vast majority of people watching will have absolutely no idea what I was just doing. Okay, so yeah, that's this is kind of cool. This is kind of giving you an idea how you could start off your campaigns in Theria. Okay, so now we're getting some some different... Uh, I wonder if they've got sanity. I didn't see anything about sanity, but here we're seeing incurable madness, short-term madness, long-term madness, indefinite madness. There must be some aspect to the game, uh, or to, I should say, the stories to the podcast adventures where sanity comes into play. Cool, critical fumble tables. I, I always like that. Critical hits. I'm a fan of critical hits and critical fumble tables. Just it it just adds a little more to your your storytelling as opposed to oh well you know you did twelve points of damage. So we have Alarian characters. We've got guilds and groups from player groups. All right. So now we get into characters. So I'm going to take a guess that these are uh, characters and I should say player characters and NPCs from the shows there we go 
So we get some artwork for some of them. I'm going to take a guess that these are the featured characters or maybe big bads, as well as some of the minor NPCs. Oh, so here we go. There's the vampire, the countess. Taking a look through here. Well, I'll tell you what, you are certainly not getting jipped on gameable material. I'll tell you that right now, paging through this. Just peeking through this, I'm, I'm really curious about the podcast. I really am. But I think what I'll, well, you know what I'll probably end up doing is I will probably check out, uh-oh, well, there's an error here. Ah, that happens. That does happen. Yeah, it looks like uh, the font was messed up, so it's all, I, I have seen this before in books. Well, that's, that's too bad. I'm sure there's a, and you know, erotica or FAQ out there that'll have provide this info. I'm sure in the PDF it's been fixed because it's very easy for people to correct a PDF. A little difficult to, to correct a printed book. You know, this is, uh, like I said, this is very impressive. I'm liking this. Oh, anyway, I was starting to say, you know, I think I'm going to, I'm going to give the podcast a listen. Check it out. See what I've been missing. I wonder if we're going to get a little adventure or anything. Because we are still going through all, all these different NPCs, different characters. Wow. That is a lot. <laughs> it's, it's rare you see this many characters and uh, info and stat blocks devoted to characters and NPCs. Oh, wow. Even more. It's just These must be minor, minor characters. So it's all alphabetical there. So here we go. We've got the, the cast. So I guess these are their characters. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. All right. Brienne Marie is one of the authors of the book here. There's Jason Massey, the other author. So no adventure, but that's okay. We had a section there talking about how to kick off your campaign. So that's cool. All right. We get some Kickstarter backers as well. What I'm going to do here is let me take a look, see if we've got the credits for the artists we do, I believe. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I am going to zoom in on this so we can give these folks a little bit of credit for their artwork. All right, so we've got our interior illustrators here. Also have the cast, cartography. Nice, very nice. All right, and that is everything from the Adventurer's Guide to Theory of Volume 1, Ilara, which is from Dungeons and Randomness. So we'll swing back over to the other camera. All right, come on. There we go. For some strange reason, my, my little setup is not quickly changing cameras sometimes. Wonder why. I don't know. All right, anyway, so... As I mentioned, that is The Adventurer's Guide to Theria, Volume 1, Ilara, which is from Dungeons and Randomness. It's written by Jason Massey and Brianne Marie. And the 392-page hardcover is available for $59.99. Or you can score the PDF for $29.99 over at DriveThruRPG. 
I will have a review of this in the future. It'll take a bit of time to get through this, but I will do a review of this because it looks pretty interesting. And what I'll probably end up doing is maybe listen to a little bit of the podcast so I have kind of a, a little bit of background, a little feel for it, so that I'm not just reviewing the source book in a vacuum. All right, so that is it for this time out. Let me once again remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ring that notification bell because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this first look, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs right here on YouTube Monday through Thursday nights as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, that's it for this time. I will see you next time. And as I've been closing out all of my videos during this pandemic, unfortunately, please let me remind you to stay safe, be smart. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, let me point out that uh, the things I'm going to be pointing at, if you are just watching the Daily Dope stream, you may not see what I'm pointing at. Uh, usually it will take about 12 hours once the stream is finished for YouTube to allow me to add my end screen. But... If you're watching one of my other videos, such as my reviews or interviews, first looks, pastures, what have you, well, then, by all means, click right here, and you can subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel. If you click right up here, you'll find the latest episode of my live stream, The Daily Dope. And if you click over here, that's going to show you something that YouTube thinks you might like. Regardless, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and thank you very much for watching.